Serverless or containers, a common challenge, right? Something you've probably got a preference for in your head. Maybe you've been stung in the past by cold starts and vowed to never look at a Lambda function again, or maybe you've had to manage a Kubernetes cluster. For that, I'm really, really sorry. But here's the thing, this is not an or decision. That's right, you don't need to pick one or the other. Crazy, isn't it? Reactive serverless functions, long running containers. If you're building modern software, I can almost guarantee that you will have a use case for both. And by the end of this video, you're going to have a clear heuristic for when to choose one over the other. Hi, I'm James Easton. And to start with, let's just ground this in reality. I'm sure many of you listening are building actual applications. So I'm going to give you a task to get your brains worrying. You've been assigned a task to create a new application that's going to manage loyalty points. It needs to allow users to retrieve their current loyalty points, to spend their loyalty points, but it also needs to receive messages that other services inside your system are publishing and use that to increment the number of loyalty points you have available. Which sounds simple enough, right? And I'm sure whichever preference you have for building software, your brain has already started thinking of a solution. So if you are a serverless or a containers maximalist, how exactly might this look? Well, if you were building with serverless functions, you will probably end up with some kind of API gateway, some kind of input, some kind of endpoint, and behind that, you would have your two different serverless functions for your get loyalty points and for your spending loyalty points. And then somewhere in the background, you would have a third function that is reacting to those messages that other systems are publishing. If you were doing this in the container world, you could well end up just with a single container that is both receiving the requests from your users, but also processing the messages that other systems are publishing. Now, each of these approaches brings about its own benefits, but also brings about its own challenges. Let's start with the serverless functions. At the core of most serverless functions is that ability to dynamically scale up and then scale down. That is their superpower. And this is great for reactive workloads. It's not so great if you've got a user sat there waiting for a response because most modern websites need milliseconds to load. And if you're anything like me, if a website takes a long time to load, you're gonna leave, you're gonna go somewhere else. Responsiveness, predictability, low latency are all things that the modern internet user has come to expect. Not to say you can't do that with serverless functions, you just need to do a little bit more work to make that happen. Now, if we switch over to containers, there's some problems here as well, because containers on the other hand, they might make your users happier because they've got this consistent response time, this consistent latency. They've got this thing that's sat there always listening to their requests. But you've also got this same system sat there reading these messages. And there's two potential problems with that. The first is what if suddenly you get a hundred times the amount of messages than you expected previously? That then causes this service to crash, which then has the knock-on effect of, eff of affecting your end user. Now you might think at that point, well, maybe we could just run a separate container image for processing the messages and a separate container images for servicing the user requests. The problem with that is that you've then got this completely independent running application that is using up resources, slowly killing the planet one underutilized CPU core at a time. That is not really doing anything if there are no messages to process at that moment in time. Your users are happy, they're getting fast response times. Your cloud provider is probably happy because you're paying them for some resources that you're not really using. You, you are probably not so happy. Now, the observant amongst you have probably noticed something interesting there. The downsides of serverless functions, their reactivity, the fact they scale up and they scale down, or the upside of containers. Containers are sat there always running. And the downsides of containers are also the upsides of serverless functions. So what does that mean for you? Well, if you were to start to mash these two things together, you would start to build both and merge them together. Your user requests that need to be fast, they need to be predictable, they need to be responsive. They could be serviced by some kind of long running container. So your user request comes in, that hits some kind of long running container that's always sat there listening and it responds to your users and your users are happy because they've got really fast response times. They've got something that's already there waiting for requests. And if you treat this as an not an or, if you don't say we have to choose serverless functions or containers, you say we're going to choose both, this then opens up the potential to have 
your suite of serverless functions sat in the background processing these messages that other systems are processing. And hey, if there's no messages for a system to process at that moment in time, your serverless function is going to scale down. It's going to cost you absolutely nothing. So your message processors are only there doing work when there is work there to be done and your container is sat there ready to service user requests. And if suddenly that 100 times messages per second flood into your system that you're used to, don't worry, because your serverless functions are going to scale up to handle that. Here's the thing, in technology, we all love to pick sides. We love division, we love arguing. That our way of building is better than another way of building. .NET is better than Java. Rust is better than Go. In this case, though, the and is your friend. And I know what some of you are thinking, but James, I can configure auto scaling on my Kubernetes cluster. I can use tools like Keda, like Carpenter, pod auto scalers to achieve, this, achieve the same outcome. And yes, you are correct, but why would you? Why would you introduce a tool that you need to manually configure to manage to operate and to find some infrastructure to run it on? When you could just use a tool that makes that specific feature set a first class citizen, citizen. Even if you're running containers, I can still almost guarantee that you don't need Kubernetes. In fact, unless your ability to dynamically scale infrastructure is a core differentiator for your business, you are probably absolutely fine just using whatever built-in container orchestrator your cloud provider of choice gives you. Whether that's Azure Container Apps, Amazon ECS, Google Cloud Run, optimize for running your containers, your long running applications in a way that minimizes the overhead that you have, the infrastructure management, the operational overhead. And then combine that with something that scales up dynamically for your reactive workloads, which is probably going to be some kind of serverless function. Now at its core, I'm basically describing it depends, the age-old mantra of software development. Have a workload that is user-facing that need predictable low latency access. The simplest approach is probably to use a well-established web framework, package it up as a container, run that on your cloud provider's native container orchestrator, whatever that is. You also have a workload that needs to react to things happening, to dynamically scale up and down, be incredibly resource efficient, only doing work when there's work there to be done. Choose something that has that feature set built in as a first-class citizen. Now, of course, as always, there is nuance here. Maybe you've got an internal application that your HR team accesses once a month. It's internal, so latency is probably less important, and it's also infrequently accessed. So maybe a serverless function is the right place to run that web app. And equally, maybe you need to do a load of pre-work at startup time to then process messages. Maybe you're loading a lot of data into memory that you can then use to do some batch processing. Maybe it's more efficient to run that batch process as a container that's going to scale up, do the work and scale down. So what are your thoughts on this old serverless or containers debate? Have you been stung by cold starts? Have you to manage a Kubernetes cluster and are feeling the pain, let me know in the comments below. And if you like this content, please subscribe or check out one of my other videos. And if not, well, thank you for sticking around till the end anyway. See y'all in the next one.